So what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the Jeffman 316 Custom YouTube channel. I'm your host, as always, Jeffman 316, your pop culture reporter, and welcome back to what's going to be a movie review video. In this video, I'm going to review the latest theatrical release of Venom, Let There Be Carnage. I was lucky enough to see it in my local theater um, this past weekend. Not a stream at home movie this time, an actual movie in the theater. And I wanted to let you know my honest take on the film. It, I, I let it settle for a couple days before I recorded this video because I wanted to make sure that I was totally honest. I'll do my best. It's probably going to be a non-spoiler review. Um, I'll try not to get off track and give any spoilers, let's just say. Um, but I think I'll better give you enough details in between um, to let you know exactly how I feel. You'll understand the good and the bad. Um, and then before I give you my ultimate rating. Uh, so before we get into the review, do my the normal YouTube stuff that I always ask you to do. Like, comment, share the video. Um, and then subscribe to the channel. Then once you subscribe, make sure you do that last little thing. On your way out the door, hit that little notification bell and you'll be the first to know when I post new videos like movie reviews or other pop culture related videos. So let's talk about Venom, Let There Be Carnage and you'll find out whether I think it's Maximum Carnage or whether I think it's Venom, Let There Be Hot Garbage. Let's go. So Venom, Let There Be Carnage stars Tom Hardy as Eddie Brock, Woody Harrelson as Cletus Cassidy, and Michelle Williams returns as Eddie Brock's former fiance Anne. Uh, I'm going to be honest that I had mixed feelings, like I said, um, when I came out of this movie, but um, th there's a lot of good things, so let's go ahead and start with the good. Um, I think Tom Hardy is really great as Eddie Brock, and he seems to feel more comfortable in the Venom skin this time around. Pun intended. Maybe that's because he actually helped more with this movie. I know he produced it, and he actually helped write this chapter of the Venom story. So maybe having him help determine exactly how the Eddie and Venom uh, characters interact helped him in the role. So I'm going to say that they've written this movie to be a little more over the top as far as comedy goes this time. So if you didn't like it the first time around, there's more in it this time. There's a section of this film where I, I'll say that Venom and Eddie actually feel feel like a little bit like the odd couple. Um, this could be considered a good or a bad thing. I say either. I say either. I say neither. And I say neither. Um, Venom, I guess, would be your Oscar character. And then Tom would be Felix, even though he's not that clean. Um, but they're constantly bitter, uh, bickering back and forth. Um, it did lead to some funny scenes, and I found myself laughing out loud several times. So it worked a little bit for me. You live in my body. You live by my rules. I'm sorry. I don't know what came over me. Please, let me fix it. So I can fix it again. You are a loser. Um, I did hear a lot of people complain that just like the last one, that they couldn't understand exactly what Venom was saying sometimes. But in this one, I understood every word that he said. So I think they did a really good job with that. Um, another really good um, element is I thought Woody Harrelson did a great job with at least with the material he was given. Let's just say I'll talk more about that in the bad section. Um, I might also say that I think the CGI is really good this time around as well. Um, the on-screen depictions of Venom and especially Carnage look really good in some scenes, especially in some of those big epic fight scenes like at the very end. It looked good on the big screen. Um, i also say that the movie was really um, tense as far as action goes. There was a, It was like a roller coaster ride from one scene to another. They didn't have much fat. Um, no bloated material added into the middle of scenes. It was a really tight story that went from one scene to another really quickly. Um, some people may not like that because it doesn't really give you a chance to catch your breath or learn more about the characters. But I like the fact that they didn't try to throw in too much into this one. And they just let it be, you know, Eddie versus Cletus and then ultimately Venom versus Carnage. That worked for me. So in one final good thing I need to add... There is a after credits. Well, that's, it's actually a mid credit scene that um, you're going to need to make sure you watch because let's just say we might not have got the version of Carnage that we really wanted, but I think Marvel fans are going to be pleasantly surprised, especially where 
let's just say with what happens, where it can take the MCU and possibly Venom 3, if there is one. So um, look out for that. Um, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about some of the bad. Now, like I said, even though I thought Woody Harrelson was really good in the role, I think he could have been better. Um, I think the movie was, was well written for the on-screen version of Carnage, but not the comic book version of Carnage. Um, Carnage is one of the few Marvel characters that has a small place in my heart. I've never been a huge comic book fan, but there were several times over the years where I really did get hooked on comics. One was Batman when he got his back broken by Bane. I thought that was cool. Another was Superman um, as he when he was killed by Doomsday. And then the other one was Maximum Carnage. So we got a really good version of Bane finally. We got a half-assed version of Doomsday, but it was it was okay. And then I was hoping we'd get the Maximum Carnage version of Carnage. But we didn't. Maybe we got what we call minimal carnage. Oh, shit! Oh, where are you going? That is a red one! You need to come out right now. If you came out of the first movie and you liked it, you're probably going to give this one a thumbs up because you're going to get more of the same. If you came out of that last movie and you didn't like it, sorry, because you're, like I said, getting more of the same. Um, what I mean by that is they didn't change the formula at all. Remember, they're still playing Venom in the PG-13 box that he has to be written in in these Disney Marvel movies. Um, there's not a lot they can do. Um, there's very little blood even when he's biting people's heads off. Uh, Carnage is actually also a watered-down version of the Carnage character you saw in the comic book. Um, but we should already have known that going into this based on the first movie, right? It still made it a little disappointing. I wish they could have went a little bit more over the top with the violence. I know it's not a good thing, but uh, a good R-rated version of this movie does exist somewhere in the multiverse. Um, it could have been written and filmed just like the comic book version, maybe. So come on, Disney. We have Deadpool. We love Deadpool. We spent our hard-earned money to see Deadpool. Then we did it all over again with the sequel. So you know that we like this kind of stuff. So you could have really given us the maximum carnage we deserve. Um, to go back to Woody Harrelson, he's even a watered-down version of Cletus Cassidy. Look at some of the over-the-top over roles he's played, like Natural Born Killers and things like that. Even Zombieland, he was a little over-the-top. To me, Woody Harrelson was playing just a comic book villain. And when I say that, I mean puns, over-the-top. He wasn't like crazy or a serial killer at all to me. You even almost forget about that aspect once they... I mentioned it I, when he's in prison. Once he gets out, you don't really hear much about that ever again. And you don't really see him trying to do anything like that. So even the Cletus character is watered down. Um, another bad thing that I'll mention involves the plot, but related back again to the Carnage character being the main antagonist. I never felt that Venom or Eddie were in any kind of danger, or even Anne at that um, I don't even think that I felt like they were in danger or there was any chance of them getting killed. Um, it's almost like they're missing some part of an act or an extension of an act. Let's compare it to another action film like Who's Got a Hero, let's say uh, Rocky Three. Hear me out. So Rocky starts in the film down his path and you know you got Drago going down his path. You know they'll eventually cross, but before that, what happens? Drago meets Apollo. And what happens? Apollo dies. So even though we know Rocky's character and we spent two movies learning that he can overcome the odds, there was tension there. We feared for Rocky's life. Even in that last fight, we, we kind of knew we, how it was going to end, but it was tension, right? You understand where I'm going? Well, Carnage didn't feel any more threatening than the symbiote that was in the first film. He was just a red version of that one. Venom, Brock, or Ann never felt in danger to me, like I said, and that's a big letdown for this plot. I really think with the Carnage character and Cletus being a serial killer, they could have let it made you feel like there was some danger of something happening to one of those characters. Um, and then speaking of that, Michelle Williams comes back as Ann, and she's basically in just an extended cameo here. There's one moment in the film that involves her character where they play back to a joke from the first film that I'm not going to ruin it, but you probably know what I'm talking about. I thought they would have been cool if they went over the top with that or made Venom in, react, uh, you know, more to that. Because, um, hey, they were, they were two former lovers and they could have played that up, but they just played it safe and they wasted another opportunity. 
So to round out this review video, I'm going to let you know that I liked Venom Let There Be Carnage, but I wanted to love it. The source material is wasted here on a watered down version of Carnage. Shame on you, Disney and Marvel. This is not what we deserve as Carnage fans. The film isn't hot garbage, though. I'm not going to go that far. It is worth a watch. And if you're like me, let's just say it's meh. Mm. I was going to give it a thumbs up, but the more I think about it, the more I wish that they had made the film that I think is, like I said, somewhere in this multiverse. Um, they're enjoyable moments, but just not enough of them. So have you seen Venom Let There Be Carnage? What do you think of it? Um, what do you think of my review? Um, leave some comments down below and let me know. Then after you do all that, do the normal YouTube stuff. Like, do a dislike, comment, share, subscribe. And then after you subscribe, do that little thing I ask you to every time. Hit that little notification bell. You'll be the first to know when I post new videos. So until next time, boys and girls, when we do another movie review or tour review or anything pop culture related here, this is JevMan316, your pop culture reporter, signing out saying, you guys be safe out there.